back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Today, I am joined by the amazing Frank Smith. Uh, Frank, how are you doing today, brother? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. No, so good to have you. For those of you that don't know, uh, Frank is in Bag of Tricks. You've seen me do the promo video. I also have the link right down here in the description. Make sure you're checking that out. He's also been in Fears Teaser, as well as I Got the Hookup 2, uh, just to name a few things. Uh, so how are you doing, man? Are you holding up in quarantine okay? Quarantine's nice. Um, I'm still vacationing, still doing all the regular stuff, so I should be uh, a little more conscious. But hey. <laughs> Well, as long as you're staying safe, man, that's all that matters. Social distancing, putting your mask on, just doing the things that are important to stay safe. Of course. I did test negative, too, so I'm like, you know, doing something okay. Right. Always a good sign to hear that as well. Um, so we are here today, uh, Bag of Tricks, something that I'm a big fan of. Again, if you guys haven't seen it, I did a promo video for it. Frank, unfortunately, couldn't join us that interview. He was a busy guy. Uh, Bag of Tricks, what can you tell us about filming? How was that? Bag of Tricks was fun. Bag of Tricks was a lot, a lot of fun. So I got the script a couple months before we shot, and I immediately fell in love with the script. Um, I just liked the way it was written. It, um, you know, it opened very like ominously and then it kind of like led to like, you know, it, it was like a love scene, like two, three minutes after that. I'm just like, how it goes from, you know, this creepy scene to like this totally opposite thing. And then it comes back like, yeah. um, you know, just the the quickness that that happened was amazing. So and I also fell in love with the character Ryan, which is just who I play. It, it's such a it, we were talking before we started shooting everybody growing up had i'm from adrian michigan is pretty much where i'm from i'm from the suburbs of adrian and we had ghost trestle out here which is a haunted over top train track you can go under it and it's you know it's a haunted trestle out here and Weird that's enough. kind of what bag of tricks reminded me of you know what i mean we all have those hometown folklore horror stories that we talk about and bringing that up i mean even though it wasn't the same story you could go back to feeling that way on halloween you got to be at ghost trestle at 3 a.m and you'll hear the kids screaming as the train goes by you know yeah, so you're scaring me just with that story right there <laughs> So to see you guys doing something like that, it was captivating. It was fun. I'm really hoping I've talked to Brantley and Michael and Jenna and now you, I'm really hoping that we can eventually get a full length feature film out of this. I think that it would work wonders. Obviously the shorts doing great. I'm going to plug it one more time, guys down here in the description, click it. If you haven't seen it yet, I promise you're not doing me a disservice. You're not doing him a disservice. You're doing yourself a disservice by not watching this. And you're going to watch it and you're going to wish that it would keep going. That was my first reaction. When it ended, I was like, no, we need more right now. So um, again, thank you for coming on. Now I do want to get into why we're here, sir. We're here to talk about the first horror movie that you ever watched. We've got the ball rolling for you. And that movie was. Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Oh, my God. Oh. <laughs> we all love it, man. Um, so um, do you remember how old you were the first time you seen it? Yeah. Yeah, I was seventh grade. I was like 11 or 12 years old, somewhere around there. Uh, yeah, that was a, it was a crazy, crazy experience. I... Um, so my parents told me I should never watch this scary movie. Um, my parents, you know, they took care of me and everything like that. They were very loving and everything like that. They're all trying to protect me. So when it came to, you know, scary movies and they didn't want me to do anything, you know, they didn't they want me to cross the end of the, the block where I was playing with my friends, stuff like that. So, right. But this particular movie, they thought it was very scary themselves because the opening scene was, you know, the voice comes on and it's like, you know, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, this actually happened. They, my parents were very scared that this actually happened. This is a real. Right. Also, my dad's from Texas. So okay. Already, like, you know, he's already tripping about it and everything like that. So I was like, you know, that's the movie I probably should watch if they're so scared about it. You know? <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been watching it at my house with my parents or anything like that. So I go to my friend's house, and of course, his parents are out of town. We are 12 years old. So we have like our. I don't know, our game system where we rented the DVD some kind of way. We got, we got a hold of it. Sure. And that was the first time I watched it. I was at my friend's house. It was like midnight and I was like 12 years old and we watched Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Had nightmares for a while, but you know, that's what it's for. <laughs> well, even that sound, when the soundtrack, it, but you know, even that alone is just so creepy. Like every time you hear that, you're like, oh, and 
something that we've talked about on this podcast before is if you go back and rewatch Texas Chainsaw now, it is not a bloody or gory movie. It is just a straight up horror movie. Like this is a very scary movie, but they didn't rely in my memory. I remembered it a lot bloodier and gorier than it was upon a rewatch. But when you do rewatch it, it's not that bloody or gory. I mean, you got the scene of him opening up and he's got the blood all over him, you know, but it's not really like a gore fest. Like everybody remembers it. So while we're on that, I would like to know which scene from the film affected you the most. You know, when you asked me this before, I thought it was, you know what? It was the dinner scene. I'll stick with the dinner scene. Um, you know, one of the, like, the, it was like close to the climactic scene of the movie. Yeah. Um, it was. So the reason why I was kind of back and forth, I was back and forth between that one and actually um, one of like the opening scenes. Um, people refer to it as the meat hook scene where um, she first comes into the house and she gets placed on the meat hook. So that was, that's really what hooked me and, you know, had me watching and put me on the edge of my seat was that scene. But the most memorable scene and the one I had nightmares from was the dinner scene. I actually remember um, having like a recurring nightmare of me being that person at the table and coming after me and touching my face and all that kind of stuff for like months and months. And you're talking about that dinner scene and it's just crazy how at first she's just crying and screaming and they start mocking her. You know, like they're doing the, ah, ha, ha. and to me, like that was terrifying. Yeah. You know, cause like you said, you're an actor. So I'm not an actor by any stretch of the imagination, but I do love to put myself in film when I'm watching it. So putting yourself in that situation, like that's the gotta be the most paralyzing worst feeling. You, you know, you've watched your friends die. You've watched your little brother die and you're there now and you're just trapped in this chair they got cramp- yeah just stuck and oh god it's terrible terrible for like like min- like minutes like you know five minutes straight just you know it was even that point where like the dad is like man you guys should probably stop let her <laughs> like chill out you know? well and we're talking about it that move i think they did that whole scene in like one or two takes that shows how great that actress is to be sitting there doing all that screaming in one or two takes and she completely nails it. You feel almost like it's like an anxiety, almost like you're getting closed in, like a um, claustrophobic feeling when you're watching the scene. Because it's literally the walls are closing in on her. She knows that her time is almost up. And you've never felt a bigger feeling of relief, at least for me in a horror movie, is when she climbs in the back of that pickup truck at the end. And she can't do anything but laugh. You know, she's hurt. She's covered in blood. But she's just laughing as they drive off in the sunset, man. And that's one of the first victories I remember as a kid, you know, like, yes, you always, a part of me always is okay when the bad guy wins. But in this one, you were like, this girl's got to make it, man. After all she's been through, she's got to make it out alive. So that was good to see her do that. Um, yeah. Now, when it comes to Texas Chainsaw, someone brings that up. What's the first thing that pops into your head about Texas Chainsaw? Hmm. Well, I guess one of the first things is like, there's a hundred thousand remakes. <laughs> Um, I'm not a huge sequel fan and remake fan, so I've only really watched the first one, but I, that's one of the first things that comes up. I'm like, I wonder what all the other ones are like. If that one, you know, if it's such a big phenomenon that everyone's remaking it, like, I wonder what the remakes look like. But in terms of the actual movie, it would probably be, like you said, that last scene where she's bloodied up and finally getting away. And then I just see in my head, like, uh, Leatherface with the chainsaw just going, you know, he's like really, really mad and like it, the sun's all setting and everything like that. So that's one of the scenes that uh, that I remember a lot. Another one is um, 
when she enters into well one of the actresses enters into the house following her boyfriend it was like one of the beginning scenes probably like close to the middle um and she goes into the room and she finally sees what's in the house and it's like all the bones and the animals and stuff like that that's another scene that just every time i think about that movie i think about that too and then that i believe if we're on the same scene that's where leatherface comes out and hits the dude with the hammer and it's just the dullest thud but it's the worst sound in the world just that and the dude falls it's not that you know super climactic wham wham it's just one boop and the guy's down and it's just so like your heart just drops at this scene yeah yeah yeah. it's crazy (laughs) another thing that really trips me out is how big he was like that was a large human and he was very very fast so him chasing you with the it's like oh my god (laughs) See, and that's another thing about Leatherface that all people off it gets lost on people. You know, with Michael Myers, Jason Voorhees, they're just walking and they catch you somehow. But with this, there was that also feeling of realistic. Like I said, at the be- you said at the beginning, they put that this was based on a true story, which we all know it was. And it was inspired by true events, the Ed Gein. But you got this big guy chasing after you with a chainsaw. Like, that's literally the thing our nightmares are made out of. Seriously. <laughs> um so we talked about the first thing that pops in your head we talked about your uh the scene that impacted you the most but is there a certain scene you have that's like your favorite scene in the movie hmm. um my favorite scene I don't know. It was just like I. Every time I remember the movie, it's just all like <laughs> tormenting and like. Yes. Um, this is one of those movies too that you can always remember, just in chronological order. Yeah. You, you remember how everything happens exactly how it happened, and that's why this movie is one of those greats to me. We talked about how scary it is, but Toby Hooper really went into the you know with the score, and even the lack of music at certain parts. You know, he knew what he was doing when he was sitting in that director's chair. And he's one of the most underrated directors, I mean, of all time, in my opinion. I think he's absolutely fantastic. And what we were talking about, he he can make no sound be so loud in this movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that <laughs> is probably my favorite. My favorite scene was probably the the one in the beginning with the, um, the one we talked about with the girl in the in the house, finally seeing Leatherface's house. Um, it's probably my favorite scene because I imagine myself being there. Like everything they did made sense. I'm like, yeah, maybe I'd, I'd probably go in after my friend and see, you know, what's going on, why he's taking so long. And I'd probably, you know, look this way and I'd probably trip over that. It was like everything made sense. Like a lot of the movies I see nowadays, it's like I would never, I would, no, especially horror films. Like I'm never going to run into that dark room with, no, you know, but for no reason and there's nothing right. really other. I'm not going to fall in the middle of the forest for no reason. It's like stuff like that kind of <laughs> irritates me about movies nowadays. <laughs> but, um, but that movie, it was like everything I would, everything was so realistic. Like I would do exactly how each of the actors would do that. So um, th- like I said, that was probably one of my favorite scenes was when she came into the room and when she finally saw Leatherface's house. That's Great. epic. It's an epic scene, man. I'm, I'm so with you there. Ooh. Oh my God. Oh my God. Go Wait, I'm sorry. Another... I love this movie so much. Another one of my favorite scenes was when she finally gets to the gas station, one of the actresses, and you think it's all over. And it, it, the the gas station owner, we find out that he's a part of the whole thing. And I'm yeah. like, no way. <laughs> no way. <That laughs> and was- the guy, and I believe, oh, no, I'm thinking of the remake. Yeah, he tried to steer him off at first, but then he ends up being a part of it. But yeah. man, that's, that's another one of those twists that you're just like, oh, can't they please catch a break, please? Exactly. <laughs> so I got a couple more questions for you. Um, which kill? We haven't talked about kills yet. Which kill from the movie? I don't want to say favorite because that's super dark. But what kill um, stuck with you the most from this film? Which kill? Um, probably, I don't, I don't remember the actor's name or the character, but the person in the wheelchair. Yeah, the little brother. Yeah, yeah that was... I. I felt so bad. I was like, no way. Why would you? You knew it was going to happen, but you just didn't want to do what was happening. And it's right in front of you. And you're just like, oh, okay, I guess. And especially because, like, he was that annoying little brother. Like, you know, when he was doing the, 
like he was that annoying little brother. So you kind of, I, you kind of felt like he was going to be one of the final people in the film, yeah. you know, like he was going to be one of them that survived because of that, but. Because of his skepticism and like not wanting to like, let's go home. Let's, let's just get out of here. Like, yep. <laughs> uh, so I got two more questions for you. This one, we talked about Texas Chainsaw Massacre. That was your first horror movie. Now I want to go scream on you. What's your favorite scary movie? What is your favorite horror movie, Frank? My favorite horror film is... So let me say this. I have, just to preface things, I have lived under a rock the majority of my life. So my my vision, my like scope of things is not very large. Um, I do... I'll say this. I really like the Saw franchise. Absolutely. I am super into blood and gore, which is why I like Chainsaw Massacre. Like, there was not a lot of it, like we talked about, but there was enough in there for me to, like, really feel something. But, like, yeah. I like the more bloody and the more gory. I like the more, like, I, I love the bones and everything like that. So, Saw, for sure, was one of my favorites. I've watched probably... I probably didn't watch all of them. I probably watched like five or six of the movies full all the way through. And I don't, like I said, I don't like franchises. I don't like remakes. I don't like yeah. things like that. But that one saw, I love all the saws. And the- I've always said that if they stopped Saw at three, that would have been the greatest horror trilogy of all time. Why can't, um, you, Why can't you just, like, you did enough. You've done enough. You know? It's good. I don't know if you know this or not, but next year, the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre reboot comes out. Great. <laughs> sure. I'm, See, I'm one of those people that um, I don't think remakes or reboots are inherently bad. I think there's a lot of really, really good ones. Um, I loved the new Evil Dead. I loved Friday the 13th. I loved the new Halloween. The new Child's Play I thought was pretty dope. Um, but the original Texas Chainsaw remake they did with Jessica Biel, I, I didn't feel that one as much. I'm one of those people also, you'll never hear me say, oh, that sucks or oh, that's terrible. If you're making art, good for you you know i'm happy for you it just may not be for me um a lot of these remakes aren't for me pet cemetery i wasn't a huge fan of that remake as well um but i'm always that one guy though that no matter what every time one comes out i'm going to watch it it's like green day man to me they haven't made a really really good record in years but every time one comes out i'm the first person in line to buy it man (laughs) i gotta have it right when it comes out so that's it for me um last question i have for you my friend we are ranking Texas Chainsaw Massacre. In your opinion, zero being the worst, five being the best. We're using zero to five skulls. You can use half and quarter skulls. What would you rank Texas Chainsaw Massacre? Um, you mean in terms of all horror films ever created? Yeah, just where would you, I mean, like almost like a Siskel and Ebert rating. What would you give it? Instead of stars, we'll use skulls. Okay. On how great you think it is. <sighs> I will say you did mention a couple of good remakes, a couple of good movies, like the Friday 13th, like all of that was really, really great. Um, I would say it's probably somewhere, maybe like a three, seven, five. That's fair. A little bit harsh because, you know, we've come a long way since then. And, you know, it's sort of simplistic, like the, the entire concept and especially the first movie was sort of simplistic, but the fact that they were able to do so much with so little yeah. and you know, it's been like a, like a phenomenon, like people have loved it. You know, I'm not the only one who loves it. It's like, it could have done a couple of different things, but for the most part, it's like one of the, one of the classic films of you know, all time. I think. Um, and I'm with you. I, I think three, seven, five is a perfect rating for this film. That's exactly what I gave it. And I'm not blowing smoke up your ass. That's exactly the number I gave it was 3.75. But one thing, We talked about there's no such thing as a perfect horror film. And anybody that's listened to the podcast knows the one that I always talk about that I think is the closest to perfect. The only one I've given over four and a half. uh, You know, I gave 4.75 skulls to one horror movie. And that was Nightmare on Elm Street, the original. If you took out the last five minutes of that film, I actually think that's the perfect horror movie. But the last five minutes of the mom getting drugged back in the house and the car turning into Freddy, like I'm out on all that. But. Texas Chainsaw is right up there. I mean, when you talk about how iconic this movie is, they're still doing reboots today. I mean, they went down the 3D Avenue. They've gone down the prequel Avenue. They've got, now they're doing another reboot. I mean, it's one of those films that because it's so open-ended, 
you can do a prequel to this. You can do a sequel to it. You can modernize it and make a reboot out of it, which talks to really how powerful this movie is. Because there's a lot of movies from the 70s, 80s that you try to do that and they modernize it and it just doesn't look good or it doesn't feel the same or they put too much CGI into it and kind of ruin the feel that the original had. But for you to sit here and say that Texas Chainsaw Massacre was your first horror movie, I'm jealous. That's such a great way to start your horror life. Um, don't go anywhere, man. I got a couple questions for you. Everybody else, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to say it one more time. This is my show and I can do whatever the fuck I want. Click the link down here in the description. You're going to check out Bag of Tricks. Everybody, keep talking horror. Stay what you are. And we'll see you guys soon. Perfect.